Hi everyone, uh, my name is Stephen Haita. Um, I'm an international rugby player who received a four year ban for bad substances on the 12th of June 2019. The reason why I'm doing this video is because today marks the one year anniversary of when the media, i.e., the BBC, Sky Sports, and RFU, amongst other media and news reporters, posted content about my four year ban. As everyone knows, Verminia only posts the one side of the story. And by the end of this video, I hope you understand my side and what really happened, and then you can make a fair judgment. I want to make it clear that what has happened is my responsibility. And by the end of it's for people who do know me to personally and professionally understand how badly the media represented me and did not portray my values as a person. So let me give you a bit of a background for those who don't know me. Um, I was the first person for an ethnic minority background to play Romania 15s international team and also to be the captain for Romania 7s. For three years, my home club was National 2. Uh, they were National 3 as well uh, at Hull Rugby Union Club. And before that, I played in Romania. Um, I've also played club rugby in Romania, championship national one teams. And I actually started my professional career at London Wasps Academy when I was 16. Um, I grew up in a working class family in London, and this is where I call home. Uh, I have my Romanian 96 year old nan, who I've been caring for since the loss of my mum in 2015. And since then, all I've been trying to do is progress as much as I can as a rugby player in life in order to support her financially as there's no one else to do this. So let me give you a recap on the lead of the start of the season to which I received my ban. Um, in July 2018, I achieved one of my biggest achievements in my career and I had the privilege to captain the Romania 7s team for the first time and in me doing so I was able to regain promotion for Romania. Uh, to put this in perspective, um, the league is below the World Series where like England, France and all the major 7s teams play. Um, my time playing international 7s made me realise how much this sport meant to me. Uh, but also when playing for my country, um, it's not only where my nan originates from, but also the country I spent a lot of time in and very close to my heart. And it makes me proud of my heritage. The time I spent playing for Romania was a huge privilege and it made me fall in love with the country. And even more respect for the staff, the players, uh, of who I spent a lot of time with. And I returned to pre-season ready to start uh, in September in top form, having won the European Grand Prix 7s uh, with Romania. And I was more than ready to get stuck in to keep the status as top try scorer for Hull Rugby um, after we missed out on promotion the season before. I was in top form for Hull. I broke the club's try record in the season before Christmas. Um, because of this form, I was lucky enough to be selected for the Invitational 7s team to travel to Dubai 7s in December 2018, which we won. You can imagine after winning with Romania months beforehand and now to win in Dubai 7s, I was on such a high in my career. And also looking forward to meet my fellow teammates for the following summer um, in Romania again, so we can play in the International Grand Prix 7s in 2019. After the Buy 7s, it was a Christmas break before the league, so I took the opportunity to return home to the London to care for my nan. I also caught up with friends and to just carry on training. I trained with one of my mates, who I'd known for a long time and who I trusted. Several times when I was back, I trained with this trusted friend. We often shared a pre-workout during training and not once did I think twice as I've trained with them for many years. It didn't even cross my mind that I should have been concerned about what was in the pre-workout given by my friend as they were also involved in professional sport and knew my recent success in rugby and in my career. 
I returned back to Hull on New Year's Eve for the season game around the 3rd of January. Excited to get stuck in as there was a massive opportunity for the club to get promoted and I was only a couple of months away flying to Romania to get ready for the Grand Prix 7s. During that time in January, I was also recognised by a Super League Hull FC team who offered me an opportunity to train with them full time in preparation for Romania. Just to put this in perspective, Hull FC, for those who don't know, are a professional rugby league team with full time professional athletes. So, you know what? I was like, let me use this opportunity, another opportunity to get fit before I go to Romania Sevens. The following month, February 2019, I was at the club one evening where UCAD and people who don't know, there's a UK anti-doping association that turned up as they do randomly, do drug tests on six players um, selected by anti-doping officers for a national free club. This was no concern to me. I've been tested literally months before with Romania and I'm used to getting tested frequently more so than other players due to me playing international rugby. And just to clarify, I had been tested regularly over the eight years of me playing full-time rugby. Not once have I ever had an issue. This is also the first time Hull had been tested in four years and I was the only player in the whole team to be tested regularly. Once we had finished training that evening, we approached by the anti-doping officers who proceeded to select players to be tested. It was at this point that myself and the team noticed two players that had previously been present during training and had left the grounds and they were about to miss the drug test. I gave my sample to be tested as requested by the UCAD and did not think any further. As I've said, I'm well aware of the consequences of taking bad substances and especially at such an important time in my career. like. Why would I risk such a thing? In April 2019, we won the league and we got promoted to National 2. And after a long, hard fight from all the players, you can imagine at this point, it was such a relief knowing that all the blood, sweat and tears had been worth it. I had my head down and all I was thinking about was literally like, I'm ready to go, captain the sevens team for Romania, ready to go and prepare for Moscow Sevens, where we was back obviously playing the big teams again. <sighs> At the end of May, I flew to Romania, ready to enter a camp with my fellow teammates, and, uh, where we played in Amsterdam Sevens, we went to Algarve Sevens. Uh, these were preparation games for the Grand Prix in Moscow in July. I honestly, will never forget the way I felt the day the coach from Hull called me in to tell me that my test in February was positive. All I remember was literally coming off the phone and falling to the floor in such a shock and disbelief. I can't even explain the feeling that I had. From that day, the RFU informed me that I was currently suspended and you can imagine all my hard work, sacrifices throughout my whole rugby career, in particularly that last year, I put myself through to then be told that this was all over. I was meant to literally fly to Moscow a week later with the whole team. My immediate initial thought was literally my grandma. Like, how was I going to look after her and myself as rugby was my only income. It was my, literally my only source of income. It was literally my job, it was my life for so many years. I need to pay for care workers, I had to put food on the table, keep literally a head of, keep literally a roof over both of our heads as there's no one else to provide or support this. All of this, as I mentioned previously, I'm literally her only family and there's literally no one else to turn to. After I had time to think, 
and to process my thoughts about what happened. I wanted to like read a report and like find out like what substances they had found in my body. And once I did that, I found out that it was the two of the strongest anabolic substances that are banned across all sports. I literally felt isolated that I wasn't allowed to be in contact with my club back in the UK and I wasn't even allowed to be in contact with the Romanian Federation for any support. Looking back on this, this was probably the one time I needed the RFU during my whole career in order to understand what was going on and where my next steps. I knew I had not intentionally taken any of the bad substances with all I had to lose. Like, there was no one there for me to turn for advice at that moment. The only person I literally had from what I can remember was literally one of the best managers and one of my best friends uh, and I had the privilege to be part of in my life was Mihai Lazar, who people would know. And I'm not gonna lie, I felt let down by the RFU. The only other person I could really speak to was my close friend back down in London and I was training at Christmas with. I told him about my band and I explained how I didn't understand how it got into my system. After speaking to him, he actually admitted that there could have been a possibility that the pre-work that he gave me at Christmas may have been bad substances in it. Can you imagine how betrayed I felt that someone I trusted, who I knew knew my personal circumstances and known the effect that it would have on my career and my reputation, not to mention my financial implications and emotional distress that it would have caused me. This friend of mine actually wrote a statement as part of the hearing process which confirmed this. But, however, surprisingly, but RFU refused to take this into evidence and the decision was already made. I hate the fact that they painted Romania especially in such a bad light and disrespected my name and what I truly stand for. <laughs> Coaches, players would know my efforts from Romania when I did something great, such as when we won the European Grand Prix Sevens. This wasn't published by BBC or Sky Sports. The last time BBC posted anything in my career was 2011. And that just highlights that posting articles is not about posting for the good, but mainly posting for the bad. My ban, I believe, was used as a statement for anti-doping given. Example, for other two players in the team are also banned, but they don't have anything barely posted. This was the same for other players that were banned the same year. I can't help but feel that the volume of articles written about me was more than expected being at the end of the year as well. I also feel that I have to mention a fact about the players from Hull got between two, three and a half years, both short of time, I'm sorry, both shorter amount of time than mine. Would this suggest that maybe being dishonest if you run if you run off and you're faced with anti-doping testing that you get less of a ban? I literally struggled to see how the RFU ensured fair decisions, but it is what it is. I also want it known that despite me getting a four year ban, I was offered a reduced sentence for one year. One year I was offered a reduced sentence. Should I have been willing to provide information on my friend? Basically to be a snitch if I don't anything about them. And the reason for my four year ban was mainly due to the RFU believing that my consumption of bad substances was intentional. And as quoted in the report, however, if this was true, then why would they have offered me a reduced sentence if they believed that I definitely did it intentionally? And to be clear, although I had a positive doping result, I felt that I had clear evidence that I hadn't consumed anything intentional. Now, can you imagine at the age of 28, having played professional rugby for so long, like, why would I take bad substances all of a sudden now? I had too much to lose and my life literally depended on rugby. 
And as I mentioned previously, I had been tested regularly for over eight years without a negative result. And this had a significant effect on my mental health when this happened. And it has taken me literally a year to even be able to talk about the events from last year. I've literally felt isolated, judged, unsupported. And there's actually been times when I've literally been able to leave the house, embarrassed, literally, so embarrassed that I'll be judged by other players, friends, family, work colleagues. With there being such a focus on men's health right now in the media, this definitely wasn't taken into consideration when likes of BBC and Sky Sports and all these other reporters wrote their blunt and cold articles about me. Anyway, enough has been said, like, I'm gonna round this up. Like, I'm not trying to put the blame on anyone other than myself, straight. Um, I take full responsibility for my actions and decisions. And unfortunately, I trusted those around me when I shouldn't have. People who know me and who are close to me know the truth. However, I will say that as for the articles such as BBC, Sky Sports, etc., to name a few of them, they didn't write without specifying the full truth. But articles are misleading and untrue, and everyone knows what the media is like these days. I literally find it beyond disrespectful, and while I can't even remove the articles and links off the internet, I thought it's time to share this video because I'm just, just something had to be said, and I just hope that like people will listen to my side and understand and maybe rethink what was read in the media about me is not always true. There's literally always another side of the story. So I thank everyone for taking the time and watching this.